Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Crumbs and I'm here with our 1216 low elo tier list. Our regular tier list, which we post with the patch rundown and mid patch updates, is aimed at around the high gold to platinum skill level. This one covers everything below that. Obviously, any tier list is a bit nuanced, but in general, this is a great way to know what champions to pick and which to avoid to instantly give you a better shot at winning your solo queue games. And one last thing before we jump into things, I just want to give a shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and guides like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24 seven, just waiting to share everything they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head on over to ProGuides.com for some professional help. Now let's get onto the guide. First on our list, it's the top laners. Heimerdinger moves up to the S tier. He doesn't really have any bad matchups and worst case scenario, you just hard shove and neutralize an opponent. But in most cases, you'll be doing a lot more than that. Heimer's ability to perma shove lanes and harass opponents as they try to farm under tower allows him to build up a ramping CS lead. The natural response to a champ that shoves and pokes constantly is to go for run all in, but any foe doing that is just tilting right into your hands. Heimer's turrets do a ton of DPS, and when you land your grenade on an enemy, they also get hit with that big laser. So that being said, be sure to sit on your ease cooldown so you always have it when you need it, rather than just randomly lobbying it for harass. Singe's performance shot way up after those hefty buffs he got last patch, so he'll be moving up to the S tier as well. He's definitely got a bit of a learning curve, but mechanically, he's super easy. It's just a matter of learning his limits. The really good Singe players are always walking that thin line between inting and tilting their foes into oblivion by getting them to chase into their death. In 5v5s, you just want to be as annoying as possible. The most effective thing to do is to constantly be dipping into fights, spreading your poison and flipping a foe, then running right back out and do it over and over again. This forces the entire enemy team to pay attention to you, but also leaves them unable to actually commit to killing you. Orn's really been picking up the slack lately, so we're moving him up to the S tier for now. Obviously with his kit, you won't really be a 1v9 machine in many games, but with his strong laning, solid teamfight and the insane scaling he brings with his Orn forged items, you'll be able to get super consistent results with him. With Udir's visual game update coming out this patch, we're sure a lot more players will be trying to make Udir work as a top laner, so we're adding him to the tier list. We're really not too sure how good he'll be at the moment, his numbers do look high, but for now we'll just keep him in the A tier for this list. Definitely consider this one a very tentative placement though. Kled was looking decent for a while, but recent meta shifts have led him back into a pretty mess spot. He just doesn't really have the means to bully juggernauts and tanks like he does with bruisers. Poppy drops to the C tier for this patch in the higher elos, she's considered one of the most elo inflating champions in the game, but for some reason or another, she just doesn't work out too well in the lower ranks. Nar is dropping down to the C tier, bordering on going all the way down to the D tier. He was already struggling before Riot decided to nerf him and now there's just never really a time you should want to lock him in. He may have a couple of playable matchups, but even when you do get a good lane for him, there's definitely other picks that would be better options. Gragas is being moved all the way down to the D tier. Honestly, even when Gragas was a super flavor of the pick month, I've never been a big fan. He worked well in pro play as a counter to certain bruiser picks, but this is solo cute. Here, he's just outclassed by tank picks a lot of the time. Gangplank also gets put in the D tier. GP is a champ with one of the most extreme mastery curves in the game. If you're good at him, like really, really good, you can bully lane and be a disgustingly OP carry later on. But if your GP mechanics are even just a bit short of perfect, he's a borderline useless pick. You're gonna get farmed in lane, ran over in a side lane, and you'll never get off those barrel chains that you need to do to actually deal damage later on in the game. They're gonna get popped and you're gonna have oranges and just live for a few more seconds till you die. So either you're good at GP or you don't pick them. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Diana moves up to the OP tier. Sunfire Diana is getting nerfed this patch, but her AP build is getting a huge buff. 
The Sunfire build may be a bit more mindless since it's harder to be punished when you're basically a tank, but the AP build is the one that carries harder anyway, so we're glad to see it back. We'll be moving Ramus down to the S tier. We overreacted just a bit too much when Ramus got buffed last patch. He's definitely a super strong pick, but he's not quite the Giga God we thought he would be in the lower ranks. He's still probably the best champ in the role if you'd like the playstyle of playing for picks and being a hyper tank though. Dr. Mundo has been doing a lot better lately and not just in his main role as a top laner. Jungle Mundo is pretty strong too, so we're moving him up to the S tier. He clears fast, his dueling is strong, and while he is a really tanky boy, he has a lot of carrying power, so you're not just a frontliner that has to rely on the team. Despite the only recent changes for Kane being nerfed, the champ is still doing really well and we're moving him up to the S tier because of it. Kane isn't just good, he's also really easy. He clears camp fast, he takes no mechanics to fight with, and when you unlock Rast, you're just a drain tanking machine. As with top lane, we're not too sure where the new Udyr will fall, but he's looking pretty good on PvE, so for now, we're putting him in the S tier. We'll have a better idea once he's actually live, so just check back in next patch to see our full thoughts then. Poppy moves down to the C tier. Like I said earlier, Poppy just doesn't do as well in lower ranks as she does in the higher levels of play. With her jungle specifically being nerfed this patch, there's just no real reason you should want to lock her in over other bruiser and tank picks that are actually better. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Swain moves up to the OP tier with a strong safe laning phase and absolutely insane team fighting strength. He's a ridiculously good pick for carrying games hard that more people should really be abusing. There's just not much better than a champion that can do ridiculous amounts of AoE damage and be an unkillable frontliner. Pantheon is also getting moved up to the OP tier. If you're a super aggressive player that likes to stomp lane early and snowball that lead by crushing the rest of the map, this is the mid laner you need to pick up. On top of being super strong, he's also incredibly easy to pull off with point and click combos that can do half of your foe's HP even in the early levels of the game. Singe will be getting bumped up to the OP tier list here as well. That buff last patch has made him an absolute bonkers pick again, so if you like to cause mayhem, he's your guy. Tristana moves up to the S tier. She's got some nasty all-in potential in lane, is able to go for cheesy kills as early as level 2, but she's not a champion where you have to close the game out fast. She also scales really well, and if you can make it to 18, her insanely high range mobility and self-peel makes her a very self-sufficient hyper carry. Ari drops down to the C tier. Even when Ari was super busted earlier in the season, she was never really a champ that did well in the lower elos. Now that she's middle of the pack even in Diamond Plus, she's really struggling down here. Talon also drops to the C tier. He has to get super fed early on to snowball and carry in the mid game. And even then, if you can't close the game out, he falls off pretty hard. In lower elos, games tend to drag on quite a bit, so that weakness is pretty damning. Kiana is being moved all the way down to the D tier. Her kit is a really hard one to balance. If she has the burst to one shot you, there's not really any counterplay. And then there's a the huge impact her ult can have in team fights to make her a monster in 5v5s. As a result, Riot tends to deal with her by nerfing her into the ground for a few months as they did on 1215, which was just last patch. Now let's move things down to the bottom lane. Nila moves up to the OP tier. Now when Nila first came out, we really thought that she would be super OP in higher elo but struggle in lower ranks, but as time has gone by, the opposite has proven true. She's still a very viable, albeit somewhat situational pick in high elo, but in low elo, she's insanely strong, arguably being as good or even better than Sivir. Part of this is probably because people don't have the coordination and know-how to play around her strengths and abuse her weaknesses. Zwayn moves up to the OP tier. Boy, how many times have I said that on our list these year? Everything I said about him in the mid lane applies here as well. He either goes even or wins almost every lane and scales up to be a monstrous damage dealer that's also pretty much impossible to kill when he has ult up in fights. Arthas drops down to the S tier. He's still a really good pick and one that gets pretty consistent results, but he falls just a bit short of the OP tier when you compare him to the other super broken picks in it. Twitch gets demoted to the A tier. He's by no means bad and his unique ability to assassinate targets can be useful, but the hyper carries we have in the S and OP tiers outshine him way too much for him to be on their level. Ash gets demoted to her first letter. 
Like Twitch, she's not a bad pick and her utility is always a welcome addition to almost any comp, but she's just not gonna have nearly as much a say in how games play out compared to higher tiered options. Basically, if you have a winning team, you'll help facilitate that win really well, but you will not be one denying very many games with her. Finishing off our list, it's our supports. Shaco gets promoted all the way to the OP tier. We generally say Shaco is a bit more of a situational pick since he really only gets value when the opposing team has a kill lane that wants to go in on you. And at higher levels of play, that stands true. But it's no surprise that in the lower ranks, players tend to be mindlessly aggressive a lot more often, so there's many more opportunities to bait foes into a nest of boxes. Morgana gets a promotion to the S tier, her catch potential AoE CC for fights and ability to either prevent catch or enable divers with her black shield just make her a super solid addition to almost any comp. Janna also gets moved up to the S tier, try as they may to nerf enchanter items and even throw some direct nerfs at Janna herself, Riot just can't seem to get her out of the meta. She's way too strong, with great shielding, healing and peeling powers that really can't be fixed without a small overhaul of her entire kit. Zack somehow started doing a lot worse across the board over the past couple of patches. In the upper ranks, we had to demote him in all three roles for it. Down here, he's still doing really well as a top laner, but as a support, he's falling off, so we're moving him to the A tier. I'm not really sure where this sudden dip in power came from. There's been no direct changes to him or the items he builds. Maybe people are finally catching on to what Zack does. Nami also gets demoted to the A tier. She's still a pretty decent pick, but when compared to the S and OP tier champions, she's outclassed by picks that are a bit more specialized in what they try to do. Other enchanters do a way better job of healing, shielding, protecting, and enabling their teammates. Meanwhile, all the strong mage picks do a way better job of bullying the lane early, and then transitioning into being an extra carry in fights. Nami tries to do both of these jobs, but just ends up being okay at both. And that wraps things up for our 1216 low elo tier list. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Since making this list did involve going over all the champions in all the roles, I'm sure we overlooked a pick here or there. So feel free to let us know if you think we missed something down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until next time, as always, good luck on the Rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.